And here's a list of the top five telescopes I most regret selling. At number five, my original Teleview Ranger. This is the telescope that got me back into astronomy. After college, I didn't do anything for close to 10 years. I was too busy building a career. One day I saw an ad for this Teleview Ranger, 70 millimeter f6.8 semi-apochromat. Semi-apochromat? What's that? Is that like being a little bit pregnant? I don't understand. Anyway, it turned out to be a really good description. It was not quite as color free as a complete apochromat, but the color correction was much better than an f6.8 conventional achromat. Anyway, these things were kind of expensive and they were a little bit quirky. Uh, they didn't have a standard mounting plate. They had a helical focuser. Uh, but you know what? I, I got one of these things. I took it everywhere with me. This is the telescope I brought to my astronomy club, to our public sky watches. I used it everywhere. This is also the telescope that helped launch my website. Those of you with very long memories may recall that Scope Reviews, when it started in 1977, had a grand total of two telescope reviews on it. This was one of them, and it stayed that way for a long time. I didn't have access to any other telescopes. So as important as this thing was to my astronomical career, I can't really recall what happened to it. I do remember posting it for sale, and then it was gone, and afterwards feeling like I probably shouldn't have done that. So somebody has that now. Uh, the only thing I have left from it is this, this case. This is the dedicated Teleview case. Maybe I'll fill it again sometime. At number four, my Takahashi FC100. Oh, what a beautiful telescope. I had the FC76 and I figured the 100 would be bigger and better, and it was. And I had so much fun with that thing. I split lots of double stars with it. I did lots of lunar captures, and uh, I just remember bringing that thing to Club Sky Watches and people wanting to see it because it was an older Takahashi. These FC series Takahashis are cult favorites. They are favored by some people even over the new FS series, even though the FS series are technically better on paper. Now one day I was talking to my friend Mike, who is our club refractor file, and we were just talking and somehow I heard myself say, so do you want to buy my FC100? I don't know what prompted me to say that. It was almost like I was watching myself say it on TV or something. And the next thing I knew, he was on the phone with his wife getting clearance and the rest is history. I've never seen that thing again. At number three, we have my Starmaster 10 inch EL. Back in 1997, 98, 99, somewhere in that time frame, I went to Astrofest, the star party in Kankakee, Illinois. Actually, the reason I wanted to go was to see Roland Kristen's new big refractors. And I did see them, and they were wonderful, and there is no way I could have afforded any of them. Anyway, across the aisle from him was this cowboy-looking dude named Rick Singmaster who was showing a new set of Dobsonians that he'd had, 10-inch and 12-and-a-half-inch. And, and the mirrors were made by someone who, at the time, I had never heard of, Carl Zambudo. Well, the interesting thing is, over the course of the weekend, I wound up going back to that booth again and again and again, and I kept looking for excuses to, hey, can I see this again? And I started to give tours of the night sky to people through it just to have an excuse to look through the thing. I remember about midway through the weekend, I said, Rick, I'd like to buy this from you. And he said, that's fine, uh, but I need to show it for the rest of the show. So uh, I'm going to have to take it with me, and I'll mail it to you when I get back. My friend even bought the 12 and a half inch, so we both bought the EL demos that Rick had at the booth. Now at the time, I always considered Newtonian reflectors to be sort of a second-rate citizen to the refractor, but these 10 inch, uh, 12 and a half inch EL units, boy, did they, they were really starting to make me question that kind of thinking. I had that telescope for a very long time, I was showing it to people, and I put it for sale one day and somebody snapped it up immediately and I'll tell you something I have no recollection of what I bought with the money I got from selling that thing but the memory of selling that 10 inch EL lingers with me to this day and at number two of course it's the Celestron C nine and a quarter Schmidt Cassegrain this telescope has the dubious distinction of being the only one on this list that I've sold twice Two. 
I sold it once, didn't learn my lesson, got another one, and I sold it again. Let that be a lesson to you. You get one of these and it's good, and they usually are. Don't sell it. And finally at number one, oh boy, this one hurts. Back in 1999, I remember exactly what I was doing when I got the phone call from Marge at Astrophysics. In fact, I was sitting right at this desk at the time and I had a landline phone, remember those things? And I picked it up and she told me that um, I was on the waiting list for an astrophysics traveler. The person before me dropped out. I was next on the list and would I like, you know, to purchase the telescope. And there was never really any decision. Um, I said yes, even though 1999 at the time, it was not a great year for me. Um, I had some issues with my job and I wasn't sure if I was going to be employed, but how many chances in life do you get to purchase an astrophysics refractor? I remember it was $2,400, a lot of money for a small refractor, especially back then. I needed to buy some accessories and the bill was a lot higher than that. But um, I, I got it and I remember I didn't exactly advertise this on my website. I think I might have mentioned it, but it's not like I ran around saying, hey, I have an astrophysics traveler. But Somebody found out, a very nice guy from the Midwest contacted me, and he really wanted to buy it. Um, and it seemed to me that money didn't mean a lot to this guy. He just wanted the telescope. And so we were throwing numbers around, and before I knew it, I'm in a negotiation to sell a telescope that I really don't want to sell. And it left me. So I had the thing less than a year. I'll probably never see one of those again. That's the one I regret selling more than any of the others. So what about you? Ever sell a telescope you regret selling? Let us know in the comments below. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.